All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am meteorologist Alex Forbes. We were just looking live at St. Augustine. Uh, oh, there it is, okay. I, I was about to say, I think we just lost the camera. I think we did lose it there for a second, lost the signal, but we are looking at storm surge from Tropical Storm Nicole, which is already bringing wind and rain to Florida, and we'll be bringing that to Georgia here fairly quickly as we get into the afternoon hours. So uh, we've got a lot to talk about in terms of impacts here in central Georgia. Let's take a look at the radar and what's going on right now. Let me flip this over to full screen so that you can clearly see what we've got. The center of the storm south of Orlando this morning, in fact, passing very close at Disney World. Uh, as we speak, you can see the circulation right in here. That's going to be the center. So Disney World is right about there. So passing right over Disney World, the center is, but you can see the wind and rain extend far outside of that. We're looking at this now from uh, just outside the West Palm Beach area, made landfall near Vero Beach there, right along the Treasure Coast. Still down into Fort Myers, wind and rain down there along through Tampa. And notice now the rain getting up towards the Tallahassee area. They're going to see the rain first today before we do, also up into the Jacksonville area. So we were just looking live in St. Augustine, which is right here. And you can see what they've been dealing with over the past little bit. Uh, you know, a, a persistent heavy rain looks like it's starting to let up. They even had a tornado warning a few minutes ago as a band was coming ashore. This red color you see here, this is a tornado watch that's in effect along the coast right now. I expect we will see that expanded inland as we head into the morning hours, potentially up to central Georgia. So what we've got going on up here right now is the rain beginning to enter our area, already running into a few showers. This is southern Telfair County on over towards Wheeler, Montgomery counties. This is nothing compared to what we're going to see, uh, you know, later on today and tonight but the front edge is here and we're going to be watching this as it comes through central georgia as we head into tonight and uh tomorrow morning the good news is it does look like we clear out tomorrow morning and then uh you know we get to uh move right along and get nicole on out of here so i understand we're live on the mobile app we're live on uh our website and on YouTube. YouTube is where I can see your questions. So if you're looking for to ask me a question, you can ask me that on YouTube. You can also send a message to my Facebook page, meteorologist Alex Forbes, um, and we can talk about what you want to know. But first, let's talk about what to expect here in central Georgia. This is going to be starting right now into the day today. So like we were talking about, we're seeing a few showers now. This is going to be uh, Telfair, Wheeler, Montgomery counties. Play this forward into the noon hour. Notice the rain becomes a little more sc scattered in nature across central Georgia. This is uh, going to be played into the afternoon now. Notice we get the heavier stuff in here and the first band of rain comes through central Georgia through the afternoon hours. Now that first band is what's going to carry the uh, the tornado threat with it. It would be this right in here in terms of the first First real threat of a tornado. Now let's play this forward into eight. Here comes a second band here. This is going to be uh, Taylor Macon County, so over towards Dublin, and this is going to be the general motion of it. Don't pay attention to the exact location or the exact timing. Just know that we get wave after wave steadily increasing into the overnight hours here, and then we get to 10 p.m. and then into the overnight. You can see the rain becomes a little more widespread across the area. This is 7 a.m. And what I want to point out, what this model is showing, is the center of the storm actually over near Columbus, which is certainly a possibility. But depending on where the center of the storm is is going to really dictate the tornado threat. So whenever we're tracking this, what we're going to be doing is drawing a T through the storm in the right front quadrant. So the top right, the northeast side of the storm is going to be what carries that tornado threat along with it. So that's 7 a.m. there on Monday. The rain still hanging around or on Friday, excuse me. The rain still hanging around here at 10 a.m. then gets on out of here by the noon hour with just a few scattered showers left. And then we're left mostly cloudy on Friday, it looks like and uh, windy still for the high school football games on Friday night. So a high wind warning in effect for a large part of our area today. This is for gusts up to about 45 miles an hour. Washington County down through Wilkinson, Twiggs, Houston, Peach, and uh, Macon counties, areas to the south and east. So this includes Cordial, this includes Abbeyvale, Cochrane, Eastman, Dublin, Sandersville, all areas that could see gusts upwards of 45 miles an hour, areas to the north and a wind advisory for gusts to 40 miles an hour, Thomaston, Forsyth, Macon, Milledgeville, East, or Eatonton, uh, Sparta, and Butler would all be included in that. And both of these now are gonna run until 7 p.m on Friday. So it all boils down to this. These are the impacts, the hour by hour timeline that you need to know. The tornado threat, those, it, and again, these are very weak tropical tornadoes. This isn't going to be a long lasting EF3 tornado, certainly nothing like what we saw back in April, but that threat is going to begin this afternoon with that first band
end of rain coming through, and it's going to last until the center passes to the west of us tomorrow morning. The damaging wind threat will be amplified through the overnight hours as the center moves closer and passes by. That will come to an end tomorrow morning as well. And then the flooding threat. Now, our soil is very dry across central Georgia, and because it's so dry, if you get a lot of rain very quickly, it can only absorb so much before you get the runoff. So we're going to be watching for that. Now, something, a, a factor that's at play here that I really want to watch closely is one, the wind. We have a lot of loose leaves on the trees and the wind is going to knock them down. You know, what it looks like outside this morning is not what it's going to be what it looks like by Saturday because the wind is going to be blowing and knocking those leaves down. But the, the combination of that and the rain, I'm somewhat concerned for stormwater runoff, uh, any leaves clogging up drains. I do think that is going to be a distinct possibility as we hold up, head down into the next few days. Also concerned about power outages. Um, you know, we have a lot of trees around, a lot of pine trees around central Georgia. You could probably knock those over with one tap of a finger. Um, so that is uh, something we are watching for closely. The good news is though we do clear out by the weekend Saturday and Sunday. Hello 50s. It's going to feel much cooler in here. Another 40% chance of rain there on Tuesday. So we have got uh, you know a lot going on right now here in the Weather Center and uh, we're going to continue to watch this as we roll through the day today. So let's hop back over to the radar and talk about what's going on right now um, because you know this is so much not so much a forecast anymore than it is now casting. Um, you know we can look at future view we can uh, look at all of our different model runs but now we have a storm on land so we can also look at the radar and the satellite and get a extremely accurate representation of what's going on versus you know it being over the open water and several days away um, and not knowing. Something that's catching my eye right Right now that I hadn't seen yet in this storm is two lightning strikes. Um, I know this sounds minute, but whenever you get lightning strikes in a tropical system, that indicates it could be a little bit stronger than it actually is appearing. So that's off the coast of St. Augustine. And really looking at the whole storm, I think this band right in here is actually the most intense part of the storm right now. It's going to be the band from Gainesville over to St. Augustine, moving towards Jacksonville, and then out over the open Atlantic. So I'm watching these storms here as they come ashore for any rotation in them. And in fact, what I can do, I believe we've got the Jacksonville radar site turned on. We do. I can hop over here and see if, yeah, so, you know, I, I'm seeing rotation in these storms that are out over the open Atlantic. So, you know, if you need any validation as to the tornado threat today, we're seeing that now because we are quite physically seeing the, uh, the rotation in the storm. There's one there. Here's another broader one here. It looks like there's one right about there, um, another one here, and another one there. Uh, so when I flip this back over to velocity, you can see that lines up with those individual storms. So I suspect we will see tornado warnings along uh, the Jacksonville coast, the, the Georgia coast in short order. But again, this is the band that's coming up into central Georgia as we head through the day today, and we are already seeing the validation of that. A tornado watch is in effect from Flagler County uh, up through St. John's, Duval, and it looks like up through Glen. Yeah, Glen County. So uh, Glen, Camden, Nassau, uh, Duval, St. John's, and Flagler counties all included in that tornado watch. Um, and again, I expect that will be expanded as we move forward. But again, I'm looking at this, talking about what I'm seeing, um, and we are seeing rotation in these storms now. And that is, um, you know, all the, the reason we need to be talking about a tornado threat here in central Georgia today. So what I'm going to do is go find something find a graphic. Um, I want to take, in, in fact, I hadn't looked at this today, but I, I do want to see what this is showing. This is going to be the significant tornado potential, and I suspect, yeah, so you can see, you know, the tornado potential today is not extremely high across central Georgia, but it is there, um, you know, higher down along the coast, but we are still seeing the threat here. Uh, let's take a look at this on the GFS. Yep, just a little bit. Uh, Euro, not actually, not a whole lot there on the Euro, but you know, in a situation like this, we're not expecting those values to be off the roof or up, <laughs> uh, off the charts, I should say. Um, you know, this this is again a spin-up tornado threat. This isn't you know a widespread event. So um, this is what we've got going on right now. Let's see if I can hop over and check out the visible satellite since the sun is up now. Uh, yeah, that's a big storm if you ask me. Um, the the way this storm formed made it so that, here let's see, oh, the visible is not quite up yet. Um, oh, that's the water vapor. Oh, I'm sorry, well, let me hop back over to what we were looking at. Um, you know, it, it was a not necessarily the usual way a tropical system forms. It was first a subtropical storm, now it's a 
or then it was a tropical storm, a fully fledged tropical storm, then a hurricane made landfall as a cat one, uh, now back down to tropical storm status. But the way this formed allowed the wind field to be much bigger uh, than you know, how a tropical storm would usually form. Say from an African wave, uh, this was, you know, had some help from the upper levels of the atmosphere. And what we're seeing now is the result of that, and that is a you know, large, in terms of area, tropical storm uh, across Florida and now Georgia. Uh, let me see if I could pop up the wind gusts right now. Um, well, it is windy outside here in Macon. Let's see. Uh, where is my wind? Wind and wind gust. Let's see what we got here. So sustained in Macon at 16, gusting to 26. Um, that's actually the highest. Uh, well, actually, um, Butler's checking at the highest. Sustained at 20, gusting to 25. Vidalia is already gusted to 30. So, you know, this is going as expected. We are expecting to see, you know, high wind gusts today. We do have the high wind warning in effect. This is going to be for gusts up to 45, uh, especially areas down to the south, say Sandersville, Warner Robins, Montezuma, um, Cordill, Abbeville, McRae, Eastman, Cochran, Hawkinsville, Dublin, Dexter. Uh, what else we got out there? We've got uh, Wrightsville, Sandersville, Jeffersonville, all included in that high wind warning. Um, so that's what we're going to be continuing to watch. Um, hopping over to YouTube, is it rare that we have tropical storm this late in the season? I, I wouldn't say it's rare that we have a tropical storm. It's rare that we have one making landfall on the east coast of Florida this time of year. Uh, yeah, the, the location is very peculiar. In fact, I would say one, it's actually even, you know, it, it's rare to have a storm making landfall on the east coast of Florida at all. It's not usual that we get these uh, east to west moving systems. Now you add November in the mix and it's kind of interesting. But, you know, the, the way the storm formed, it's, it's rare, but it's not surprising that we saw this just with the trough that we had over the Atlantic and the environmental conditions that cooperated that allowed uh, Nicole to form. Now, it is worth noting with Nicole, I believe that's 14 names we have now used on the list. Um, so we were two thirds of the way through the list for the year. And it seems like uh, this season has been much quieter uh, than seasons past. And it has been, but the past two seasons, 2020 and 2021, were off the charts. Like it was insane how many storms we had. So this is a little more average uh, of a season. So, you know, it, it's atypical to get this type of storm now, but it's not a completely abnormal, um, you know, abnormal season, if you will, across central Georgia. Um, Where's the storm at right now? Well, that's what we've been talking about the entire time. <laughs> we've been seeing the rain uh, from Jacksonville uh, down to Tampa over towards Fort Myers. And uh, we're gonna be looking at this continuing as we roll on into the next few days, or next few hours, excuse me, not the next few days, but rolling into central Georgia um, today, tonight, and through the overnight and into tomorrow. So that's what we've got going on. Um, let's see what else. I mean, that's this is pretty much the lay of the land right now. We've got the tornado watch. We don't have any warnings yet, but I do have my eyes on several areas of rotation that are out over the open Atlantic Ocean right now. Um, and then we're going to continue to watch those through the day today. So um, let me see. Pop up. I, I, I want to leave this up on the screen because I think this is the best uh, description of, you know, what's going to happen here in central Georgia today. This is the timing of it. We've got the tornado threat starting this afternoon. That's going to last through the overnight and into tomorrow morning until the center passes us. The damaging wind threat picking up just a bit through the overnight hours. And again, we're still low on the scale. This is not a, a you know high risk event. You know, this isn't anything crazy, but this is something that's going to be notable. And it's going to impact almost everyone in central Georgia in terms of a rain threat, uh, the spin up tornado threat, but then also the damaging wind threat as we head into the overnight hours is going to be the primary timing on that. Um, so let's just run through future view one more time here across central Georgia and talk about what we're expecting. So this is it now. We are seeing a few scattered showers now, Telfair, Wheeler, Montgomery counties. Those are going to become more numerous by the noon hour. Then our severe weather threat begins after the noon hour, say between 2 and 3 p.m. with this first band of rain rolling through. That's 4 p.m. there. Uh, that's going to be that spin up tornado threat as it comes through. So wave one, wave two, say 8 to 10 p.m. across central Georgia. And then as we get into the overnight hours, there's 10 and there's midnight on into 7. The rain becomes a bit steadier. The tornado threat coming to an end as the center 
center passes to the west, it looks like, but that means we're gonna be on the dirty side of the storm for the entire time if this happens, which means we're, we got that tornado threat present until about 7 a.m. or so, and then we roll on into tomorrow morning on the southeast side of the storm now, the rain continuing. The rain gets on out of here about one, two o'clock tomorrow, left with overcast skies for uh, Friday evening. There's 10 p.m. there, so any high school football games we've got going on, we're gonna be looking at uh, excuse me, overcast skies and wind continuing. Um, that's why NASA chose Cape Canaveral because of the rare storm landfall chances there. Um, and actually, no, that's not why they chose Cape Canaveral. Uh, it, it was what NASA was looking for when they chose that spot was a spot in the United States as far south as they could get because you need to take advantage of what's called the Coriolis effect when launch, launching a rocket. So Cape Canaveral at the time when they were looking for a place was undeveloped and that's why they chose the spot was because it was uh, pretty far south and they needed to be down there. So it was just uh, what was available to them and what they needed. Um, but you know, honestly, if you're looking for you know Cape Canaveral in terms of a tropical spot is not that great because even though you don't get direct hit from hur hurricanes, you typically get them coming by there. Uh, mine goes back to Hurricane Matthew. Um, I'm trying to think of Florence was in that area. So not a great spot for tropical weather, but you know, that, that's why they chose that spot. Uh, let's see. So um, that's about it. I think I've gone through just about everything. So uh, through the day today, of course, stick with 13 WMAZ for updates on uh, Tropical Storm Nicole here as it moves towards central Georgia. Uh, we're gonna be sitting here tracking this all day long, all night long, all morning tomorrow. Uh, we'll have extensive coverage for you there. Uh, we've got our midday newscast coming up at 12 p.m. Uh, and then news at 5, 6, 10, and 11 tonight, followed by 13 WMAZ morning starting at 5 tomorrow uh, here in central Georgia. And we'll be sure to let you know everything that you need to know. All right, everyone, thank you for watching and have a great day. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can shoot me a message on Facebook. Just search meteorologist Alex Forbes. All right, everyone, see you later.